Hello, my name is Eric Hines. I'm curator of film at Museum of the Moving Image, and I welcome you to tonight's uh, or this afternoon's conversation um, with Merdad Asque and Siavash Jamali. Uh, this event uh, is uh, part of our opening weekend for an online retrospective of Merdad's films called Bound Unbound, uh, four films by Merdad Asque. Uh, and this uh, is, a, is a, in conjunction with the theatrical release of his latest film, Sunless Shadows. Um, this is actually not the first time that we've been highlighting Merdad's uh, films at the museum. Uh, in 2017, we uh, were the, the, the lead cinema doing the theatrical release for Starless Dreams, this film from 2016. Um, and we also showed his two previous films uh, in our theater, uh, It's Always Late for Freedom and The Last Days of Winter. Uh, both of those films, or I should say all three of those films, are available uh, together with Some of the Shadows starting last week. Uh, at the museum uh, via our website. Um, and also we're doing this in conjunction with Cinema Guild, uh, who is releasing Sunless Shadows and released Starless Dreams and has been an immense, uh, immensely important in terms of getting uh, these films out there. Uh, and it's really incredibly helpful uh, of them to, to do so and to work with us to make sure these films could be seen uh, in concert. Uh, so you have the opportunity to see how this project over the last 12 years has evolved. Uh, I want to thank you uh, again for joining us, uh, whatever time zone you're in. It's the afternoon, early afternoon here in, in New York. Um, we're going to be joined uh, in the evening uh, by our guests in Tehran and anywhere else you may be joining us. Uh, we really appreciate your tuning in. We also appreciate your support for the museum during this time. We've been doing most of our work in the online space uh, and we've been discovering how many people have, have found us and rely on us or at least sort of like to see what we're up to from around the world and uh, we are paying attention to, to your paying attention. So um, we are uh, going to continue to provide uh, content and, and, and put, on, put together events and conversations um, for this space uh, and so uh, keep tuning in. And without further ado, I'd love to welcome our guests, Merdad Asque and Sivash Jamali. Hello, Rick. Hello, Tom. Hi. Uh, hi, all. I am happy that I have opportunity to speak with you, and I'm very happy you watched my film. Hello. Um, I'm, I'm happy, too, that we have this opportunity to speak with you. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great pleasure of ours to have you here. We didn't have you in the building uh, in 2017, Merdad, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a real pleasure to finally be able to talk to you a little bit. Uh, we were mentioning before the air that we did meet at True False um, in 2016, I believe that's when they highlighted your films. They were a great champion of your films and they've been a great champion of this series. So I want to thank our friends in, 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 in True False over the years. Um, I saw Sunless Shadows, the latest film at, at IDFA, where it took home a top prize. Um, and uh, I, I witnessed a great moment of joy uh, to, for, for your team to be together and to be there present for, for that ceremony. And uh, it, 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 it just, it, it, it uh, was especially moving, I think, for me and probably is for you. And a quick note about film festivals is that so much of the work of documentary filmmakers takes many years and it can be very difficult to do. Um, it can be very dangerous to do. So the opportunity to gather together and to celebrate one another's work is, is not something we, I don't think I've ever really taken that for granted, but now looking back at the difficulties that we're going through right now and how you've not been able to go back to film festivals over these months and, and take your film around, um, what a great loss that is. So I'm glad that there's a, this memory of, of your team uh, you know, celebrating and, and, and having a chance to be together. Uh, uh, it was uh, one of my best memory in my whole life. Uh, both True False with uh, True Vision Award, and in it for different uh, screenings and uh, very uh, special moment for me when after the screening. Uh, audience, they said to me, we like the film and we impressed very much with the, your film. And uh, in the end, uh, I think the directing award in ITFA, it was first time in whole ITFA film festivals. But uh, uh, 
for me, it it uh, was very important because we tried to give voice to voiceless, and in Itva, we could. And uh, and what was what was really important for me that it was his fourth film in rehab center, and when you you have to go there with new ideas to develop new stories, and it's really tough to be at the same place and make a better movie and. Mm -hmm or different movie it's really difficult different story maybe because they, they are the same characters and you are you have the same crew but you have to change uh, and uh, change your mind and see how you can tell a new better story or newer story and it was really difficult and tough and when you win a directing uh, award for this film it's it's really something special mm -hmm. directing award is not just for me it's my whole crew Yes, of course. I mean, again, I, I, yeah. I mean, I I think that with 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 uh, with filmmaking of this sort, there's not an element of it that's possible without the entire crew being part of it. I mean, I'd I'd love to. I want to get to a question about the crew and 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 how that's evolved. But I I would love to go back, if you don't mind, um, to uh, the beginning of this cycle um, of 2008. It's always late for freedom, and how you moved into uh, filmmaking in this location. Um, and with this particular focus. Um, and also, so if you don't mind just telling us a little bit how you, you led into that first film, but then also talk about how it's evolved in terms of the difficulties in making the films uh, access, you know, I would love to get into all of that. But so if you could start us with, with that first film, to the, to, not, your, not your first film, but the first film in the cycle, It's Always Late for Freedom. It's Always Late for Freedom. Uh, it was very, very difficult for me for getting permission. It was my first film, and nobody before uh, us, nobody making uh, making film there and mm, about boys or girls in a rehabilitation center, especially in a special wing under 15 years old section. And uh, different times, I told my idea to the authority, authority and. Uh, different people and all of them uh, said to me, we, uh, we don't want to give you permission for making film in prison and about prisoners, about uh, boys. And uh, in that time, I didn't know about the girl section in the same center. Uh, nobody of my crew, they did, uh, didn't know about that. And uh, after different times, I, uh, the last time I gave my uh, synopsis to the uh, the director of the rehabilitation center and I asked for the last time, I said, I, I know you don't want to give me permission for making film there in the center, in the center, but uh, this is my last word. Please give me uh, one more. I want to say you, please give me uh, permission because this is very important for me and not just for me about the boys and in, the, uh, in that time it was uh, World Cup uh, about football in uh, 2006 and uh, after that they called me okay we gave uh, we want to give you 10 days uh, 10 days uh, permission for shooting but Every day, in the end of the day, uh, you have to show us all the footage. Footage, all mm. the footage. And my assistant, every night, uh, we have to copy the uh, footage. And uh, one of my crew uh, show the all the all the footage to them. But uh, it was very important for me because. My father and my grandfather, they were prisoners for political reasons. And uh, for me, it's very important. Uh, I, do, I really want to know about the atmosphere, about uh, their feeling, about, about uh, uh, young adults, about boys, about their feeling, about different thing because my father three times back, uh, had ban went bankrupt 
and uh, I uh, try, tried to commit suicide when I was 15. And for these two reasons, my father and my grandfather were prisoners and I wanted to commit, I uh, uh, tried to commit suicide. For this reason, I chose the rehabilitation center. After six months, they gave me permission and step by step, I know deeply about the boys, about the boys in rehabilitation center. In that time, I uh, think, I was thinking it's not enough. It's not enough for one film. I, ha I have to say something more. I have to, I have different story in that, this place. And uh, Frederick Wiseman impressed me for, for the style and the small geography. And I tried to stay in the uh, rehabilitation center and uh, I asked one uh, more permission for shooting my new film. And after the shooting, I said, okay, I want to make a another film about boys in holidays and something like that. And they said, okay, it's enough for you. Just 10 days, you have to go out. Go out. And uh, after four years, uh, different festivals and especially different festivals, uh, we have very good screenings in different festivals and Iranian festivals too. And somebody from UNICEF and UNESCO called the uh, rehabilit uh, the director of rehabilitation center. Do you know Mehrtad Oskui and his crew? They made a very good film about the boys and we want to know uh, more and more about his film and about him. And in that time, the authority invited me and they called me, if you want to make film, you had an idea four years ago, we want to give you permission. Mm -hmm. Just uh, four days more, two weeks. Is it good for you? I said, yes, wonderful. But, and they said, three days later, you have to start. Oh, wow. And uh, I don't have any idea. I didn't know the boys. And uh, just, I have a little idea and no more else. And very fast, we uh, uh, manage everything and start shooting without anything. Can you understand, can you imagine, just three days before the, uh, after the permission. And we, our, our shooting was uh, 10, 12 days in two weeks. For, for his second movie, he yes, had second. about 12 days. And after that, he asked for permission for the absence of the girls. And it took about seven years, am I right? Yeah, yeah. It took about seven years to, uh, gave him permission and after Star Streams he asked again for shooting permission and it took about six months and in, during his last movie Sun the Shadows they stopped us from shooting for two twice and they told us you cannot shoot anymore but somehow we managed to mm. ask mm. permission uh, they, they were two uh, two different uh, type of people in authorities in that uh, rehab center some of them uh, they liked our idea and some of them were against us and uh, somehow they finally allowed us to continue our shooting and what was really difficult for us was uh, we didn't know that tomorrow uh, do we have permission to shoot anymore any mm -hmm. Any second they could tell us you cannot shoot anymore and you have to stop and it was really difficult for us because we had to manage everything and we had to um, found found where uh, the key characters and protagonists and we had to do it in a very very um, we have a few um, we, we didn't have enough opportunity but finally we could do it so so how does that affect your plan on a daily basis. If it could be canceled at any moment, you can't really plan for something two, three weeks down the line necessarily. So what, so yeah, what, what does that, that puts a lot of pressure on every day. Yes, yes, we had a lot of pre pre pressure, but uh, what was really important for Merdot was, he, he always told us, I'm imagining that is, this is my last day of shooting. I have to do whatever I can. 
and yeah. by this strategy he somehow managed to find out stories sooner and try to develop them sooner that was his only uh, strategy for that problem the, the the other the other problem which Merdad you were just talking about in terms of the last days of winter having three days basically to prepare and I, I know that maybe the, the starless dreams and some of the shadows there may have been a little bit more time to prepare but I also know that you didn't have a lot of time to become close to the subjects it's not like you had a year to get to know them before filming so how does and and, and I think everyone who sees these films and responds to them are responding to the kind of extraordinary amount it's extraordinary intimacy that you're, you've, you've gained and that trust that people offer you on as, as these subjects. How do you accomplish that in such a short amount of time? Yeah, and uh, different times I asked uh, I ask, uh, from the authority for uh, permission and they, they didn't give me permission. And the last time, uh, after many years, seven years, and they gave uh, permission, but just one or two times, just for two or three hours, uh, I met with the girls before the shooting, and uh, yeah, uh, and uh, when I talked with the, the girls, when I, they gave me permission, I uh, one of the girl and the the others together, all together, they, one of them uh, asked me why you want to make film about us. I said I want to stop. Uh, the other girls, uh, I want to stop to... The cycle of having these girls, innocent girls here, I want to stop that, put an end to that cycle. Yeah, and uh, uh, and after a moment, one of the, the, the same girl asked me, please say us in one sentence, why you want to make a film about us? Mm. I said, I have a daughter the same age of you. After that, they accept. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know very well, I didn't know them very well, but the first, second, third day, uh, days, and day by day, I uh, follow them in ordinary, their ordinary life without any, and I know about uh, different stories about their stories and uh, 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 after I think four or the day of uh, uh, Thieves, was it mm -hmm. Thieves Day, I started uh, uh, as a storytelling, I, th I start shooting and follow their stories. And I thinking about, I, I was thinking about the structure, about the narrative, about the protagonist and uh, how many protagonists I want to follow and something like that. And uh, to them, I, I, I show them my two previous films about boys. I was wondering about that, yeah, okay. They, they know my style, they know uh, the storytelling about the different thing. And uh, at first I said to them, I am Uncle Mertad, and all of them, they are Uncle Mohammed, Uncle Parsa, because uh, they have very, very different uh, uh, sec sexual experience. And all of our, our crew, they were men. <laughs> And this is very important for for the uh, their trust and their uh, and intimacy. intimacy. Intimacy, yeah. It's, uh, mm -hmm. All the time uh, behind this, this scene, they talk about themselves to me, and uh, step by step, we uh, try to close and closer. And yeah. yeah. These are women who spent their lives being mistreated and condemned by men, and here is a crew of men coming in. Why, yeah. why, do you think, why do you think they trust? Why, why because, do you think they want to talk to you? Because uh, it's very strange, Eric, because uh, before I wanted to make two or three uh, people in my crew, I chose women. But when I, these two times, I went in the uh, rehabilitation center with the, uh, two girls and Nobody in the 
uh, girls in rehabilitation centers. Nobody look at me, nobody talk with me. I, I think something like jealousy, something like that, I don't know. But I choose all of handsome and very, very handsome, uh, good looking uh, uh, boys. And all the girls in rehabilitation sentence, they accepted us and <laughs> we can, I don't know why, it's, maybe it's uh, jealousy, maybe. But it, maybe. It, it might say something about the, how much they would love to be able to trust men and the fact that you're presenting yourselves as people who are not going to hurt them and then, and then you don't, might be very powerful, I would imagine. Yes, you're right. And about his second uh, movie, The Last Is of Winter, you asked the question. Uh, Mehrdet, when starting to shoot a film and in production, he starts with very, uh, the, uh, he starts to uh, shoot, ordinary with, life, yeah. uh, shoot their ordinary life and right. somehow he starts to have some interviews with them, not very deep interviews. Yeah. He starts to talk with them and they're making joke or something like that and step by step he gains trust and he is a real master in, in uh, when uh, when he uh, he wants to start an interview he's really master he can uh, he can speak with them directly and closely and uh, they um, when they start to speak with Merton and they look at his eyes he i don't know why but they trust him maybe he can he himself can explain it better but after gaining that trust uh, they will help Merda and um, because I guess they think that Merda is going to help them or he can understand them M maybe n uh, no one um, gave them they gave them opportunity to speak but he's giving this them this opportunity and after that they are going to trust him and after uh, gaining this trust He's going to have some deep interviews and he's going to develop his story much better. And one more thing, I'm making film not about them, with them, mm -hmm. together, as it, in the directing. And in his last are... film, In Sunless Shadows, you can exactly see this. He's yeah. making with them. So I, I would love to hear that evolution because I, I guess that was my follow-up question was, how do you, how does how does that how does that play out in terms of making it with them and and I think in Starless Dreams you see you allow us to hear your voice and you allow us to hear them interact with you and make fun of you or or or, or make jokes um, and you allow us to sort of see your filmmaking apparatus in the space as well so we don't have an illusion of being um, you know uh, with a fly on the wall whatever sort of cliche that you 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 just you you definitely just. Uh, um, disavow that 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 and then in, but then in some of the shadows we have this other element which is a new development for your your filmmaking of the direct address of uh of of, of the girls the subjects uh addressing um people who are outside of the prison uh, either you know both the, the the their their family their deceased um relatives etc um talk if you if you don't mind telling us a little bit about that decision like why this felt like it was time to to try something like that I try to, uh, we talk about the uh, method and we talk about the form, storytelling and form with my crew more and more before the shooting uh, because we don't have enough time for uh, spend time with the uh, protagonist. And for example, we have to know about the images. For example, I make, I, I, I made, uh, I choose different uh, image from the internet, from the uh, books, and uh, I select some image and uh, put in a notebook and I show to my crew, please uh, watch this, uh, please watch this in the, these images and uh, you can imagine what's meaning of close up in my mind, what's meaning of following, what's meaning of different things. and about the form, it's very important for me. The storytelling and narrative is very important. And the uh, idea for form. Idea turning for your idea to for, uh, for cinematic, cinematic uh, way. For, for example, I 
thinking, I, I was thinking before the shooting in Sunless Shadows about uh, a widow message, like a widow message between daughters and their mothers. And uh, because I think I am good in interview in my, in my different films. And I ask uh, myself, uh, how can give more and more space and opportunity to the protagonist. They directly talk with the camera and not just talking with their mothers, talking with the audience, talking with the people and camera as a witness, something like that. I think, for example, in my new project, we are thinking about new idea for the form for the storytelling. This is very important for, for me and for my crew because we made four films, the same rehabilitation center. It's very difficult. Yeah. In the same rehabilitation center, you want to say something more, a new story, new storytelling, new structure. For this uh, reason, I try to find uh, a new uh, structure for, uh, for the films and for the sound shadows too. For, and for, good. Uh, and haiku uh, poems very very impressed me Japanese poem because uh, I try to uh, make with my crew we try to make film it's not complete with the audience we try to complete the film their feeling there, there, there are some gaps yes and yes. Uh, he wants to audience to feel that gap. different different people when they read the haiku they can uh, different get different image imagination imagine different uh, for, for a different feeling for me filmmaking is like that or like a very small haiku with the big uh, story behind the film, behind the haiku, something like that. That's beautiful. And, and, I, and I think that you can see the evidence of it in the film. And, and I think in particular that the, 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 the you know, um, Sivash, you're talking about the letting, leaving room for the audience to sort of, to, 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 to be participant in it. And I think yeah. what, that what's interesting about the direct address quality of some of the shadows is that it's very direct but it's direct between two people that are not for the, it's not for the audience. The direct, the, the, the delivery is not to us. So we get yeah. to listen in, we get to witness it, but we don't necessarily get to know everything that's behind all those words. We don't know the full stories. And I think that's actually incredibly powerful because in some ways it honors their experiences to not turn their experiences into something that is a story that we're supposed to fully understand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they, they were also very, uh, we had many sad stories, but we decided to just uh, don't put them on, in the movie because uh, when uh, you are, we were in, during production uh, stage, we were overwhelmed by those stories. They were too sad and we couldn't tolerate it. So we decided to just put some of them out and just uh, have a little, or let's say, a tinge of that sad stories in the movie because the audience cannot tolerate it. We are, we are sure about it. And it's, it's not, um, we don't believe that movie must show everything, especially when we are talking about sad stories or bitter stories. We have to just show somehow uh, what happened and ha uh, had the clue of or tinge of that sad story and tell it to the audience and let them to complete that story in their own mind. Sure. And for me, uh, Eric, uh, subtext is more important than text. Mm. And, and again, another thing that's so impressive then, I mean, that being the case, and again, that being evident in the films, to not have infinite time <laughs> to absorb that subtext, to, to, to make so much out of those in-between moments, to make so much out of the stray moments of the camera catching something and allowing that to come through as and, and, and accomplish a lot as subtext rather than text. You just, it's, a, it's extraordinary to me how challenging your, your, your films are on a production level, and yet you still are able on the other end of it to, to, to make them as, 
as subtle and lyrical as they are. Thank you. <laughs> um, look, a, a little bit of a technical question, but I'm having done on, on my end as, a, as an interviewer and, and, and um, on, on a sort of journalistic filmmaking side, experimented with direct address, that can actually be a challenging thing. It's not the most natural thing for people to do. And so you were leaving them alone in the room or, is, or were you present and they could speak to the camera? And, and I'm just curious about what direction that required. Um, because it's not it's not it's not the most natural thing for everybody. I uh, one day one uh, uh, one of the protagonists, my protagonist, uh, asked me, Mer, that I want to speak with my uh, father's soul, and uh, it was shocked for me. And uh, I think myself, with myself, okay. Uh, I want to put a camera in a room, and they want to. Uh, I ask them, please talk with your mother. After that, I think, okay, they can talk with their father's soul. And uh, I put a camera in a room without any uh, people of my crew. Nobody, no limitation. Nobody of my crew, and. Uh, uh, just uh, in, outside, just I uh, listening their voice. And uh, I ask them, please, when you uh, go uh, inside the room, please push the button in the beginning and push the button in the end. And uh, I couldn't believe what happened in the room. I hear, I heard just their voices at all the time I was crying mm. because it's, uh, uh, we don't put all of the material in the field and they, uh, right. they many, many sad stories. And uh, I, I've seen that footage, it's about four hours and it's really special, sad stories, but unique. You have to, uh, I don't know, um, um, when I was watching them, I asked, I just called Mertot and uh, asked him, uh, how are you going to make these uh, lovely or let's say interesting footage uh, short? It's, it's so impressive. But he told me, yeah, we are just going to put about five minutes or something like that in the movie. And it was really shocking for me because it was really something special. But I... Uh, said to me before the uh, shooting, I said, "Please put you you your directing mind, put it out mm. your head. Please give power to your protagonist." And uh, this is very important. You know, all the time as if documentary filmmaker, we try to think about everything. We try to judge the protagonist, their situation, their feeling, and something like that. Now, I'm 50, year, 50 years old, man, and I try give more space and more power and uh, it's not like a dictator, dictatorship acts. I try to give uh, more space to the protagonist. They, their experience, their feeling, their, uh, everything in their minds is very, very important for the film. Mm -hmm. As a documentarist, documentary filmmaker, documentary storytelling, the document is their mind, their feeling. And if we find a way for uh, how can give the power, give the, as a storyteller, their story, their story, find very directly between them and the audience, it's very, very important for me. This is one of my and my crew experience in this way. But we try more and more experience about this, about this. Uh, and for example, we 
many, many days, uh, we work on sound designing. At first, I ask from my sound designer, please put it out, all the sounds, just uh, the good, just Interview? Just interview, just their voices. All of the uh, put put it out. All of the their the other sounds, and step by step, little by little, we add some sounds. Uh, this is very important uh, for me. I, you know, uh, uh, Robert Berson impressed me very much, and uh, Yasajiro also, Abbas Kiarostami. The Jean Roche, for for this reason, because they make film in silence time in their films is very important more than more than the other part mm -hmm. of the uh, scenes. For for me, this I, I try to uh, ex, uh, find uh, more way for experience and experience for storytelling about the. Uh, the, about the protagonist feeling and yeah I have a few follow-ups I just want to let the audience excuse know excuse me for my <laughs> bad, <laughs> bad <laughs> speaking my English is not very good but I try to <laughs> give my it's, it's, it's crystal clear to me I understand the frustration for you but I, it's, it's very clear and we really appreciate your your working um, in, in a language not your native one to, to express all this but it really it's it's coming through clear um, I just want to thank, I want to say uh, for, for those in the audience, if you have any questions, please use the chat uh, area um, and we'll be getting to some of those questions if you have them momentarily. But what you're, what you're saying, Merda, is, is it would make me think about how when we talk to documentary filmmakers, we often use words like trust and how you gain trust. And there's something else about what you're talking about is where you're learning to trust your subjects you're in a sense giving over certain power and giving over certain decisions to your subjects, which is another, it's another version of trust that's going in the other direction. And uh, what, what is, um, may I have some, um, had very good interviews with these characters and protagonists, uh, but uh, when he gave them camera and they, uh, they had the opportunity to speak with the camera, and after that, uh, that trust, he was really satisfied because he told to me that I myself could not ask questions to reach to this moment because they are talking about their, the, the bottom of their heart and they, are going, they, they told just things that they have never told. And because maybe they wanted to uh, talk about it in, in courts or maybe they wanted to tell it to their father or mother or uh, in the rehab center, but they couldn't tell it to anyone, but they are witnessing the camera. And when he trusted them, they really passed, and it was, uh, the result was impeccable. And one more thing, Kirk, about trust. At first, I tell them everything about myself, everything. And they know me, better than other people in my crew. In, when uh, sometimes in the corner of the rehabilitation center and the uh, room, I said many, many things to, for example, Ida, to, for example, nobody, Negar, different girls. I said many things to them about myself. If you can tell them everything about you, about your private life, your weakness, your weak, about your past, and what what's uh, about now, everything about yourself to them, they can trust you. Mm -hmm. At first, it, I don't like this method. At first, okay, what's your name? What's your family name? Who, uh, who you are? Why you commit crime? And something like that. It's not. It's not fair. It's right. not fair. Right. We make 
making. Sometimes you go there and at the first day, many, many questions. Interrogation. And, yeah. Like interrogation, right? Yeah. 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 And the first day, I asked them, please, if you want to ask something about me, about my crew, if you want to uh, work with the camera, with the sound, uh, how can I, uh, the microphone counts. and something like that, everything, if you want, you can do everything with the camera, with the microphone. If you want, you can ask me, please, uh, give me your camera i want to ask you some some question they have uh right great that's yeah that's uh, can you you talked about the the, the sound and, and and camera I'm, I'm curious about how big the crew is these are not huge spaces so i'm wondering how many people are there yeah uh, in the rehabilitation center uh in the uh, my cameraman, my sound recordist, and uh, production, uh, four. Uh, production manager. Uh, five. Were no, five. no, and one assistant. Assistant. Uh, as my assistant, cameraman, sound, and uh, production manager. But in this, uh, when we try to in the shooting time, just uh, just for people. Me, my cameraman, sound recordist, and my assistant. Uh, production manager is around us and for the food, for the managing everything. But in the... Uh... And sometimes Merdod asks people to leave. For example, mm -hmm. when he wants to have an interview, uh, maybe a deep interview, or uh, maybe he... For example, in uh, Sarlis Yes, he guesses that uh, the girl she she's not going to tell everything he asks the crew to leave the that area and he just himself stays there and start the uh, uh, the interview okay it's like a magnetic space around me and my character i try to uh, make this can i uh tell for right mm -hmm. magnetic magnetic space mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and the uh, uh, I try with my character, we try go deep and deep and deep with the, in the interview. And we need a uh, mag magnetic space between mm -hmm. us. And uh, we try to ask from my, my uh, crew, please go out. Sometimes please uh, manage a microphone, some, something, uh, where, uh, and puts it here and sometimes uh, but all the time my cameraman work with me very close but uh, i try to find a way it's make an um, atmosphere they uh, see just me not my crew mm -hmm. and uh, it's very difficult because uh, in the uh, rehabilitation center and especially in girls section four and five men in the uh, place is very difficult because all the time they can uh, for four people they can uh, when uh, they are some uh, the crew are all of them are men and they the girls are always uh, concentrating on these people <laughs> because they are boys but when it's very important if you know very well the girls, their suffering, their pain, their, their dream. With first question, they, uh, each of them, they concentrate to your words, to your questions, and follow you. Because together we are going deep and deep inside of inside of us not just inside of her mm -hmm. together for example in sorbonne uh, university sorbonne in uh, paris we have we had a very good uh, uh, session with the uh, students of the sorbonne university 
They ask me uh, how you manage. This film is not about the girls. It's about you and girls. Because different times, they try to make your character in the film. Mm. Different times, they ask you some questions. Different times, they uh, talk about you. Right. And they try as a character, the same time as a director maybe, they try to make your character. It's a yeah. it's a absence of author the yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I try to make this atmosphere between the team and the crew and director and the characters and protagonists. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult, but uh, it's very simple at the same time. Mm -hmm. But simple in the end, not simple. <laughs> Simplicity in the <laughs> start. You can, can you understand me? I think you can. There, there's, there's a really good question from uh, the audience um, asking Merdad if you could speak about the decision to also film the mothers in some of the shadows and the experience of making the trip with the girls to the prison where the mothers are being held. It's a really key important uh, moment in the film and we talked about um, things about some of the shadows that were different in terms of decisions and that's obviously a significant one. Uh, the question is why MF that put the mothers in the film? I couldn't get to. yes exactly. Um, but just the decision, yeah, just uh, not so much like um, why or why not, but just get, talk about that decision. This is a significant moment of the film, and 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 something we haven't really seen before in your films. What was really important in this film for us was to show um, the the murder from different POVs and point of views. We wanted to see it in from, uh, from eyes of a girl who is naive and her sister who is about 22 years and her mother who is about 50 years old. And we wanted to see from different perspective uh, one act, the act of murdering someone and see how all of them perceive this crime. All of them, they, they wanted to survive and they had different uh, motivations, they have different reasons, uh, and uh, these reasons finally forced them to kill someone. We wanted to scrutinize it from different POVs. And uh, one thing more is how you want to learn from the characters, and they try to learn you, teach you, they try to teach you something about love this film is not just about murder and murdering and uh, prison and prisoners and some somebody for uh, waiting for executions and something like that in the subtext the film is about love between mothers and daughters between sisters between characters in the film who want to support each other, help each other in the, uh, their loneliness time and, uh, and uh, nobody take care of them, nobody help them in, up, in the, out of the prison and the society. And for me, for this reason, I chose the mothers because uh, it's not story about them, just about the girls in the rehabilitation center and about their suffering and pain and dream and everything. It's about a uh, between mothers and daughters and between characters. And we need something uh, in this world. We need love and I can't talk about the love. I can't explain about the love. It's just one word, but it's very, very, I can uh, find different layer for meaning, different layer of meaning about love in this film. Because between the characters, it's very, very special moments. They make 
they make special moments between uh, when they went to the women prison for the uh, visiting. visiting their mothers. I can tell you, Eric, it's not very successful scene mm. because I couldn't. Mm. I tried. I all all the crew we did, uh, and but we couldn't. We couldn't uh, catch the atmosphere between the characters. Mm. Yes, it's it's very difficult because uh, the, you you have a very limited time, and when the character meet together, you cannot involve in that situation. And it was really difficult to catch that. And one thing more, uh, when you put a camera and your car, uh, your protagonist talk with, with the camera, and uh, before that, one of her, uh, one of the girls told me, Uncle Mertad, we want to talk with our mother, yes, because in the visiting time, we say something ordinary things. How are you? I am good, something like that. But when I went there with them, they said something simple, something in about ordinary life happening and something like that. But you can feeling something more from the simple words, very simple uh, conversation. You in in there because you know, Eric. Sometimes you think uh, this is the last word of the mother word with the conversation with the mother and daughters. Maybe sometimes. Uh, in that time, I think maybe tomorrow and the next week will be each of them will be executed. Executed. Right. Right. Um, the, the building off of the last question was actually I was going to build off of that for the follow up, and we just got that very question from the audience. Um, the, the, this this decision to include the mothers who are coming from outside the prison in this film seems to be. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, a bit of of a, of a new thread that you're pursuing with the new project, because your uh, is this correct in terms of the new film? You're you're working with folks no longer inside the prison, but those who are related to people in the prison. Uh, I think it's the last part. Just the, the the new film that you're working on. If if I'm not mistaken, it's somewhat thematically related to this decision to work with to to include the mothers who are outside of the prison. That, that the new film, if I'm not mistaken, is is moving, is continuing to follow characters outside the prison. Yeah, his next his next movie, you mean? Yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, after a starless dreams, I wanted to follow the characters outside of the rehabilitation center. But when I followed them in the researching time, I said to myself, it's no, I couldn't tell, the, tell, tell their story on the outside. Because you know about the Iranian society, the character said, okay, please don't come here because all the men in my family don't want to give you permission for shooting in our house and something like that. And uh, I, in that time, I think, okay, I have an idea. Uh, I have an idea in, for example, in Sunless Shadows, but my new film, I try to find the idea about the outside of prison. With my crew, we talk about the, our new idea about the men prison for the last film about prison and prisoners. But the film is not about a story about men in prison. It's about women out of prison and their husband, all of the, all of the men in a small village in the south part of Iran, 
all the men they are in the prison for whole life sentence mm. for drug trafficking. And the film about the women, they are waiting for their husband and they are need help, need support and something like that. And our question is, when people in the prison, for, for example, men in the prison, what happened for the uh, relative, for the, uh, family. their families, like uh, uh, their wives and children, kids? And can you imagine a village full of women and their children without any men? And all the men, in the prison. This is our new project because we try to find a story talking about uh, uh, people outside of prison. And again, my question is, where is the real prison? Or which, where, which one is which the bigger prison? prisoner? Or people in the village? Are there, are they prisoners or their uh, husbands in prison, men prison. And, and, and where, where do we find you in terms of that project? Are you able to make that at the moment, considering the pandemic, considering politics? What's, what's the status of that? Just waiting for the permission. Before COVID-19, we were waiting for the uh, permission, but now we are waiting uh, to see what happens in the world and um, uh, and uh, we, we are just waiting for to see what happens about the COVID-19 and after that we will uh, uh, again ask for permission and see what happens. As soon as they gave us permission, we will start. Okay. It's dangerous because you know about COVID-19 and men prison and it's a little bit difficult because uh, uh, the south part of Iran, the city is uh, a red zone for the coronavirus now. And uh, we are waiting for the permission and we are waiting for the maybe better condition, condition for starting the research and shooting okay but i know my characters i know my story but I, we need for more research and uh, i really i really like my new idea but now <laughs> i can tell you uh, truth is uh, i don't know about the structure about the form we are talking and we are thinking about the form without the form I couldn't start the film. I understand. I understand. <laughs> and I love to hear that. I, 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 I really appreciate hearing that from filmmakers because I feel like um, that's, um, that, that, that should always be the, the, the necessary question to solve for, or at least to begin to solve for before making films. And I think often the assumption is that in documentary, it's the footage is going to tell you what the form is. But um, I appreciate that you're not, that you approach it very much mindfully from. The, the idea that the form needs to motivate what, what footage you're getting. And uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, the form uh, give me energy for a start the film. And without this, I, 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 don't, I don't think, I, I think it's like a body without, uh, we don't body. We want to put something, uh, we want to tell something and uh, without body, you need body for putting <laughs> something in your mind on this. But uh, now we try to find the body. <laughs> for the <laughs> we yeah. have the soul. Yeah, we have the soul. But <laughs> it's not enough. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we can. Ruh mi tune bariya adam more than moshe. Yeah, it needs body to be uh, actually to have a feel. <laughs> well, I hope you find the body. <laughs> and I hope, I hope you both remain very healthy um, for the foreseeable future um, because we want to see this film and we want you to be able to make it. Um, and, but we've, uh, we're, we're at an hour, which is even much longer than I thought I was going to keep you. So I'm going to let you retire to your evenings and thank everybody in the audience for joining us. Thank you, thank you very much. Very, very, you are 
very good in interview and uh, excuse me Eric for my uh, language and uh, for uh, my English but uh, I talk with you with my heart I try to Right. Well, I, I thank you from from my heart, and I, I appreciate both of you being here and being such thank wonderful. It was speaking with you. We we thank will we will we will see you in the future, and I will see you in person at some point in the very near future. Yeah. Thank you. So right. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon, Eric. Thank you.